Hi everyone, this is Lady Vintage Bags here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. And today I'm coming at you with a comparison of my Vintage LV clutch bags. So today I have the LV Montaigne 27cm in Epi Noir. I have the Pochette Curad in the green Epi C or Epi Kia colour. And I have the Pochette Hom in the Capango gold colour. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start this comparison off by looking at the size of each clutch. So as you can see here, they don't look too dissimilar in size. So just to show you what I mean, I'm going to stack the bags on top of each other. And then I'm going to show you what the side profile looks like. So as you can see, all three clutches stack on top of each other nearly exactly. And also, from this side profile, all three clutches stack on top of each other nearly exactly as well. So let's get the measuring tape out. So this is the pochette hom, and this is measuring about 26 centimeters across, which works out to be about 10 and a quarter inches. This is the pochette curad, and this is measuring 26 centimeters across, which is 10 and a quarter inches, and this is the Montaigne 27. So this is 27 centimeters across, which works out to be 10 and 3 quarter inches. Now let's look at the heights of the bags. So this is the Pochette Hom. Now if you are interested in a review video of my Pochette Hom, I'm going to link it above and down below in the description box for you. Watch that video guys, I go into in depth about this clutch. So this is 18 centimeters tall, which works out to be just shy of seven and a quarter inches. Now back to the pochette curad. This is about 18 and a half centimeters tall, which works out to be just over seven and a quarter inches. And this is about 17 centimeters tall as well. And that's six and three quarter inches. So as you can see, they're only a few centimeters off each other, which is just a fraction of an inch off each other. So now let's take a look if there's a slip pocket for your phone on the exterior. So let's start off with the pochette home. So as you can see here, there's a big slip pocket at the front of the bag and you can tell this is the front because it's got the LV logo so I'm just going to slip my phone in there okay so that fits in perfectly now this is the pochette curad now guys if you're interested in a review video on the pochette curad I'm going to link it above and in the description bar down below I go into in depth on this one so have a look at that video you'll enjoy it so this has a back slip pocket as you can see here, and it extends the whole length of the clutch. So I'm going to try slipping the phone in there. Yep, and that's no problem. And so next is the Montaigne 27 centimeter. So this also has a back slip pocket, and it also extends the whole length of the bag. And I'm going to try slip a phone in there. Yep, no problem, phone's in there. And if you're interested in a review video on this Montaigne 27 clutch, I'm going to link it up above and it'll be in the description box down below for you too. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll always be notified every time I put out a new upload. So let's continue to the internal organization. So this is the pochette home. So as you can see here, it's pretty much one compartment, but you also do get a slip compartment at the back and this slip compartment does extend the whole length of the bag as well so for example the phone can go in there no problem so next we're going to look at the pochette curad so if we open it up so as you can see it's just one main compartment there are some small slip pockets here but they're so tight I don't use them at all I don't put anything in there and you also do get one zipper compartment. So again, quite simple internal organization. So next is the Montaigne clutch. So let's open it up. So again, we have really simple internal organization. It's just this one compartment. Plus you do get a zip compartment in there. So as you can see, all three have really similar internal organization. They all have one main compartment and either a zipped compartment or a slip compartment inside, but pretty simple otherwise. So, so far they're all quite similar. They're nearly the same size, 
they all have an exterior pocket to put your phone in and they all have very similar internal organization so what are we going to look at next let's go with what fits so i'm going to start off with the pochette home so i've got a few things on the table here to see what fits so first i'm going to try a 600 ml size bottle of water can i zip that up yep and that's what it looks like on the side so as you can see it's not even overstretched along the sides Okay, so now I'm going to add a full size wallet to this. So that's a full size thick wallet. Okay, so a full size wallet and a 600ml bottle of water fit. So it is bulging a little bit down there because of the weight of the bottle of water and the side gussets are not protruding too much. So that's got pretty good capacity so far. So I'm going to take out the wallet because not everyone uses a full size wallet. So instead I'm going to put in a card holder because that's a common item that people use these days. I'm going to put in a lipstick. I'm going to put in a phone. Actually I'm going to put the phone in the external compartment. And I'm going to try a thin rolled up cardigan now. So that's looking like it's not going to fit. Now not everyone carries a full bottle of water with them. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to put that cardigan back in. So, so far we've got a cardigan in there, a card holder, a lipstick, and we've got our phone in the front pocket. And so that fits, guys. Now, this doesn't look too great with the phone in that front slip pocket and the bag's so full. So I'm going to move the phone to the interior and see if that looks better. So that does look better at the moment. So if your bag is not so full, then you can get away with the phone in that front pocket. But when it's really full, everything's protruding too much. So as you can see, this is the cardigan out, and the phone doesn't look too bad in the front pocket. So that's got a pretty decent capacity. We were able to get a full-size wallet in there, bottle of water in there, and if you don't have the big items, you can get a cardigan in there. Okay, so now let's try again with the next clutch. Okay, so Pochette Curate is up next. Let's see what can fit. Bottle of water. Okay, that closes up. That's what the side gussets look like. So not too bad on the side gussets. And that's the bottom there. So it is protruding on the bottom and that's from the weight of the water bottle. Now let's see if we can get a full size wallet in there as well. Full size wallet going in. Okay. And it closes. So very similar capacity to the posh at home there. So again, the side gussets aren't looking too bad. That bottom is protruding out and that's from the weight of the bottle of water. Okay, so can we get a rolled up cardigan in there with the bottle of water? Okay, yes we can. So it's not looking too bad either. Now, let's go back to the card holder. The lipstick. The phone in the back pocket. So that's what it's looking like with the phone in the back pocket. And the card again. So there we go, guys capacity is pretty good. That's what it looks like on the back with the, with the phone in the back pocket. So these are really decent clutch handbags. So now let's see 
if the Montaigne can match up to the other two in terms of capacity. So this is a snap button. So being a snap button, it is going to be a little bit weaker compared to this S-lock and compared to a zipper. So first, bottle of water. Okay guys, so shape's looking a little bit not great already. So it's already looking overstuffed on this one. So I think this one is going to be the loser in terms of capacity. So let's add a full size wallet to it now. And that doesn't close at all. So this is already probably the smallest capacity of the two. Now let's go with the cardigan. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. So let's add that card holder, that lipstick, and the phone. Let's put it in the back pocket. Okay, so that's doing okay in this size clutch. So even though they're really similar, this one seems to have a little bit less capacity in it. So now let's take a look at mod shots next. Okay guys, so I'm starting off backwards now, I'm starting off with the Montaigne 27 clutch. So in order to be able to attach straps to it, I did alter the bag and I punched holes into the leather to add these swivel D-ring rivets. So if you'd like to see my tutorial video on how I convert my LV clutches into handbags, I'll link that above and in the description box down below for you. That might be something you'd like to do with your clutches too. It doesn't have to be designer, you might want to turn any clutch into a handbag. Okay, so here it is. So this is what it looks like as a crossbody bag. So as you can see, it's quite a nice not too casual but not too dressy look with this leather strap so it can be worn dressed up or dressed down and if you just want to use a bag you're just opening the snap getting in and out of it that way or just using your hand into the slip pocket and getting your phone that way okay so now i'm going to do strap number two which is a gold chain strap okay guys so this is what it looks like with a thin gold chain strap so as you can see the thinness of that strap there and the great thing about this strap that it's so thin that you can either wear it long and have it as a crossbody bag or a long shoulder bag. Or you can loop this really small lobster claw through the D-ring, double it up on the other side, and now you have a shorter strap and you can wear it as a daintier shoulder bag. So that's another way I like to wear it if I'm going for that sort of under the shoulder or more formal look. So I'd wear it to a wedding like this. So next up is the pochette curad. So I also altered this bag to turn it into a handbag by punching holes into the leather and adding these swivel D-ring rivets. Okay so here's what the bag looks like as a crossbody bag. So for reference guys I'm only 156 centimeters so I think it's about 5'1 for the Americans out there and I'm about 53 kilos. So that's what it looks like as a crossbody bag. This is what it looks like as a shoulder bag. Okay guys, so here's the bag with the gold chain. So it looks like so as a crossbody. This is what it looks like as a long shoulder bag. And I can do the same thing again where I double it up for a short shoulder book. So using these really small lobster claws, I'm just gonna loop it through the D-ring and then attach it to the other side. Now I can pull the strap and wear it on my shoulder. So if you guys have watched a couple of my other videos, you know I'm a really big fan of the Louis Vuitton S-Lock. I love that trunk closure. And that's what drew me to this clutch. So the final bag we have is this pochette home. So as you can see, I have not altered this one and I have not punched any holes and added any D-rings, but I'm able to attach straps to it by using a handbag organizer. Okay guys, so this is the handbag organizer I bought from KD Australia. Now for some reason I wasn't concentrating really well that day and instead of buying the correct handbag organizer for Push at Home, I accidentally bought the handbag organizer for a toiletry 26, which unfortunately is taller than the Push at Home. So I had to fold it down. 
Now I bought the style that came with grommet so I could purposely add straps to it but after folding the handbag organizer down the grommets were no longer available to be used for adding straps so then I went and added these photo frame triangles and sewed it onto the handbag organizer as a contingency plan. So here's my push at home. I'm just going to insert the handbag organizer. I'm going to lift up the tail with the zipper head, pull that ring through so it sticks out. And then have the other ring sticking out through this open end. And then when you close the zipper, you now have one ring sticking out on this end and one ring sticking out on this end. And now you can add straps. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like as a crossbody bag. This is what it looks like as a long shoulder bag. So I'll just show you how I use these photo frame triangle hooks. So you just attach your strap to the hook there and just attach your strap to the hook here. So I really like these triangles because they do stick out of the bag whereas if it was a grommet it may not stick out as far and then the lobster claw might end up rubbing on the clutch. Okay so this is what it looks like as a crossbody bag. Now let's double it up for that short shoulder bag look. So again this lobster claw is even small enough that it can fit through this photo frame triangle. So this is what it looks like as a shoulder bag. So I have worn this to a wedding like this and it was quite comfortable to wear and I fit in a slim can of a drink as well so I could keep hydrated. Okay guys so now let's talk prices. So I bought these two in 2018 from the same Japanese reseller which is my favorite Japanese reseller which I'll link in the description box down below. And I bought this in 2020 from an Australian private seller on eBay. And what prices did I pay? So for these two in 2018 I paid about 200 Australian dollars for each of them and for this one I paid about 180 Australian dollars in 2020. So I paid roughly nearly the same cost for all three of them. Now these two did have additional costs because I did have to buy materials in order to alter them. And for this one, I did have additional cost because I had to buy that handbag organizer so that I could wear it with crossbody straps. So they did come with small amounts of additional costs each in order for the bag to work for me the way I wanted it to work for me. Now in terms of current pricing on eBay, so as you know, pre-love prices have really gone up lately. So if you were to look at all three of these, you can, if you're lucky, and depending on what sort of condition you're looking for, because if you're looking for really good condition, then nothing's really that cheap. But you can get them still, or can find them still, for between 300 and 500 Australian dollars. So again, things do take time to look for on eBay for a good deal, or whatever website you're looking at. You might be looking at Etsy, Bestia Collective, Carousel, but good deals do come up. So between three and five hundred dollars, again, depending on what color you want and also what condition you're after. Now it's a tough choice between these three, but if you were to choose one, if you could only get one of these three, I'd probably advise to get this one because it has the best capacity. You can add straps without altering the actual bag itself by buying a handbag organizer. I have not yet been able to find any seller that sells handbag organizers for these. I mean, these aren't overly popular styles, so maybe no one's interested in making handbag organizers for them. You could maybe find other handbag organizers that might fit inside these that have D-rings or grommets for straps that you can add. But the only thing to be mindful of is because these are flat bags that if there was a strap attached through these side holes, it may result in rubbing along the flaps. So that may or may not bother someone if there was wear and tear along the edges of the flaps. Whereas this one doesn't really produce any wear and tear with that handbag organizer I'm using and with these triangles as they stick out of the bag. So guys my final conclusion is if you're to pick one maybe start with the posh at home first. 
might be the easiest and most bang for your buck. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. Thanks for listening and have a nice day. Bye.